Hey everyone, it's Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and um, you've probably noticed that I've kind of, well, moved around a little bit. For some reason I'm sitting on a desk which is a little bit weird. It's not the most comfortable place to be, but it was the only way that I could actually do this video because of this huge great big box here. So essentially what the plan is, um, is to build a, a system for rendering. Now the whole kind of reasoning behind that is down to the fact that we're doing all of our videos in 4K and because they are in 4K um, obviously that means that the file size is so much bigger. Because file sizes are bigger I'm lucky that I have got quite a good upload speed. Um, I've got a connection of sort of 300 down 60 megabit up which is nice direct fiber connection. In my old place it would have been terrible. That's why I, I guess we didn't really do many videos um, sort of in the, in the past purely because it was just going to be difficult to kind of actually get that across um, in a sort of timely fashion. So now that we're you know in a new place and we have much much better internet speed it's, it's a lot easier. So yeah I had to set up the camera and it's taken me quite a little quite a while um, so apologies if I sound a bit out of breath because I had to get the wide angle lens on here to kind of fit everything in and then it's kind of a bit too wide that I'm fitting in things that I didn't want to fit in but we're persevering and we're going to get there. So you're probably wondering what all this is kind of all about. Um, so like I say, we're, we're producing all of our videos in 4K now. Um, because of that, the file size is so much greater that the, the current system that I've got, which has been fine for kind of, you know, your, your average kind of stuff. I think it had a, a GTX 970 in there, um, an i7 um, 6600K, um, sorry, 6700K, um, yeah, yeah it, it was fine for sort of day to day stuff, but rendering obviously takes so much more performance from a system, especially when you're doing it in 4K. So that's when I came up with the idea to kind of reach out to a few of our sort of preferred partners and see what they could do and see what they could hook us up with to, uh, to basically build a new system. Now, starting with the great big box at the bottom, um, this is the Inwin S frame. Our one's a little bit different though. Um, basically, the Inwin S frame, when it went to retail, it only really came in, in certain colours. This one is kind of a limited edition one. Uh, we did some coverage back at Computex um, 2015, I believe it was. Yeah, it must have been, yeah. 2015, maybe even 2014. It, it all kind of, when, when you go to these shows, it kind of feels like every show goes into one great big show as opposed to kind of dividing it off each year. But Inwin invited us to their factory and uh, we saw kind of essentially how the Inwin S frame was made out of some great big six foot piece of, uh, piece of metal. It was absolutely crazy, real sort of eye opener. And what they did was they showed us how it was built and then they told us that we was gonna be getting a review sample. There was only kind of, I don't know, maybe 10 different media there from all over the world and we were kind of the only ones from the UK who were there and we managed to get our hands on one of these and it's so limited edition that where Inwin kind of do their limited edition number 0001 whatever this has just got limited edition number and then the e-technics logo and you will see all that uh, in another video when we actually come to sort of build this we're gonna hopefully do like a time lapse video showing us you know building everything but yeah limited edition sort of color it's got our logo on it it looks really really cool so i've kind of kept this here for quite a while because essentially you know we get so many chassis and everything sort of pass through our labs we can't just keep hold of them sometimes we give them away sometimes you know we, we do just have to kind of store them for a little while and then when we run out of storage we have to essentially get rid of them but this one always stayed because of the fact that it's got the e-technics logo on it it's pretty damn cool so we kept that and i i thought i'm always going to build a system in it only problem is the chassis is absolutely huge so it had to be a really special system so that's when i reached out to a couple of other brands and ask them if they could send over some components that we could uh, you know build this render rig with and, and i think that's going to be the name of it the render rig so there is going to be a whole video based around this but i wanted to give you guys kind of a i guess a little glimpse as to what's actually going to be going in it so we've got that um over there if i move uh, the memory and everything out of the way at the heart of uh, of everything is going to be the MSI X99A Godlike Gaming Carbon. Now, initially, I was going to use the Godlike Gaming. Only problem with that was the color scheme is kind of fixed, and obviously, this being um, a limited edition color, it's kind of like a bluey and silver color. I wanted to have the flexibility to kind of change all the colors to suit the chassis, and because of that, um, the Godlike Gaming. 
godlike gaming carbon kind of came along and obviously it has a full RGB spectrum for the light so I thought that's going to be perfect so um, the godlike gaming kind of went out the window and the carbon came along you know it's completely black and I could change all the colors to kind of suit what would match in with this so we're going to have that motherboard in there inside is going to be a i7-5820K uh, I could have gone higher spec but I managed to get my hands on this 5820K and it seems to be that sweet spot, I guess, of getting value for money. And I wanted to try and make this system kind of appeal to people who would be essentially going out and doing something similar. 4K seems to be, you know, uh, becoming more and more of an industry standard. And because of that, wanted to make um, the system reflective of what someone is actually likely to go out and buy. No one is really going to go out and buy like a 5960X or anything like that because the, the high price point of them, especially when you've got the 5820K, which is kind of nipping at the heels of performance of that chip, but for a fraction of the cost. So it seemed like the wise one to go with. So we're going to have that. Uh, we reached out to Crucial and they set us up with two 32 gig kits of um, Crucial Ballistics Elite. Uh, this is the, um, there's four sticks in each pack. So we've got eight sticks in total, um, all eight gig modules. DDR4, 3000 megahertz, um, voltage of 1.35. And once again, wanted to go for kind of the black color scheme to, to tie in. Um, we did look at other modules when we were speaking with Crucial, but it seemed like the Elite, the, the Crucial Ballistics Elite was kind of the way to go because the other ones had, you know, there was a red kit, there was a white kit, and it just wouldn't have tied in with the, with the build. So thank you very much, Crucial, for, for supplying these. And um, obviously with rendering, 64 gig is really, really gonna help. Um, we're, we're trying to sort of eliminate any potential bottleneck that the system may have. And that kind of leads on to the next one, which is the operating system drive. Um, so this is the Zotac Sonics 480 gig um, PCI Express NVMe solid state drive. Such a mouthful. Um, essentially, um, this is going to eliminate any bottleneck. We could have put in a standard solid state drive or even two in RAID, but it wouldn't have got nowhere near the performance that this can get. So I um, don't know if you can see on the camera, but the read speed is up to 2600 megabytes a second, write speed 1300 megabytes a second. Obviously, when you're rendering and you're using multiple files, um, a fast operating system drive is, is crucial for that. Um, see what I did there? Crucial. This is Zojack, the memory is crucial, remember that. Um, but yeah, we did a review on this a little while ago and I will link this in the description um, below as well um, for all the stuff that we have reviewed. Same with the Godlike Gaming Carbon. So you can see all the results, but we wanted to use something that, yeah, was just gonna completely eliminate any bottleneck. So we've got that, so thank you very much to Zotac for sorting that. We then sort of decided that we wanted to make it as quiet as possible. And because of that, the, you know, there was only really one brand that sprung to mind, and that was Be Quiet. Uh, you know, the clue's kind of in the, in the brand name. So we ended up reaching out to them, asking for um, a 280 mil uh, AIO. So they ended up selling us, uh, sending us the, the silent loop, um, 280 mil. So this is going to be fantastic because it is, you know, extreme cooling um, for an AIO, really great performance, but it is dead quiet as well. So that was really important for us. And then, um, obviously, for power supplies as well, you know, Be Quiet makes some fantastic power supplies, and their latest and greatest ones for kind of, you know, that high performance and um, low noise output was going to have to be the Dot Power Pro 11. So, kind of evaluated how much power this whole system was going to use. Obviously, the 5820 uh, and, the, and the X99 board, you know, it, it's quite a lot of power at the end of the day. But we haven't got loads of hard drives in here. We're going to be storing um, you know, all of our footage on uh, a NAS. I've got an 8-bay um, NAS, which has got four terabyte drives in each of them in a RAID, uh, RAID 5 configuration. So I can kind of offload all the files and everything once I'm done across that, um, across our gigabit network. It will take no time at all. So all I really needed was the one drive. So I'm not clogging up the whole system with loads of drives, which are going to be kind of you know nipping at that power. So 850 watt was, it was more than enough. Um, you know, they, I think they go up to 1200 watt with the Dark Power Pro 11, and I think they start at 550 watt. But yeah, 850 was was absolutely fine. It was that sweet spot where it kind of still gave us a bit of room for upgradability. But for the components that we, we that we're actually planning to be using, it, yeah, it's more than enough. Um, especially when you put in this graphics card, which is the GeForce GTX 1080. So. Um, it's basically the latest and greatest uh, graphics card from NVIDIA. This is the Gigabyte G1 Gaming Edition. Um, I will show you this as well, because I'm sure you all want to see exactly what this looks like. So, 
we've been using this um, quite a while for kind of uh, VGA driver analysis and gaming performance and things like that. And once again, um, I wanted a card that was going to kind of tie in with our color scheme. And um, yeah, this one kind of fit the bill. There's a couple of others out there which kind of have a, a more, you know, stealthy um, color scheme, but I thought this was fine. Um, obviously, there is no orange on our whole system, apart from on the Be Quiet stuff. So I did sort of think, you know, if you're going to be able to see, um, if I move this out of the way, um, if you're going to see kind of the silent loop with the fans that has that slight orange on the actual middle of the fans, then, you know, I don't really have a choice other than changing the fans, but then that would defeat the object of having Be Quiet products. So because of the orange on there, I thought the G1 Gaming was perfect because it wants, you know, it has little bits of orange on there as well. Admittedly, when it's in the system, you're not going to be able to see it because it's going to be facing that way. So essentially all you're actually going to see is this metal backplate, which is really, really nice uh, because it's black. It can kind of tie in with the whole scheme of the black memory, the carbon motherboard, and then the blue lights sort of tying in with the case. So that's kind of why we ended up choosing that graphics card. So thank you very much to Gigabyte um, as well for, for sending that. And that gives you kind of an overall look at what we're using. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments out there about, you know, we've got this fantastic, huge, I mean, literally, I can't even reach to the other end of this box. It is absolutely massive. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of people in the comments saying, you know, you've got this massive chassis with an X99 motherboard and 5820K really high-end kit, 64 gig of memory and NVMe drive. Why are you using, you know, an AIO, Go Custom Loop? Well. We will be, and that's all I'm really going to say about that because all I wanted to do with this 4K content was try and get a system that would, I guess, give us extra productivity, and that kind of stems down to wanting to get a system up and running as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, so that we can start churning out a lot more video content. And while we could have done a custom loop now, that's kind of something that I feel could maybe benefit in a later video, but for now, I just wanted to get everything up and running as soon as possible, and that involved just using a straight out the box solution like a silent loop 280 uh, 280mm. Then, yeah, we'll get everything built up, we'll be able to produce videos, and then in a, a later date, I'll be able to, when you know things die down a little bit and we have a bit more time, I'll be able to, to actually, you know, I guess, take this rig apart to a certain degree and put in a custom loop which is you know, going to be fantastic. It's going to be blue as well. You know, E-Technics blue, the blue chassis, everything blue, blue, blue. So yeah, I think that's going to come at a later date, but for now we just wanted to get everything up and running. So um, that's kind of our reasoning behind that. So I know there's going to be people commenting about it because we've got all you know, for high-end kit here and then no custom loop, but it will be coming, so bear with us. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it really. That's, um, I guess everything, we was looking at putting hard drives in, but as I say, we've got the NAS, so I, I didn't really feel that there was a need to do so. Um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea as to what we're doing with this system, why we've chosen the components that we have and the, the brands that we have as well, because there was certain aspects that we wanted to do, matching the color scheme, having it high performance, um, and obviously where we edit in like Premiere Pro, you know, Nvidia graphics, and the mass amount of memory is really gonna help there. So we wanted to do all that um, and tie everything, tie everything in, but we wanted it to be essentially quiet as well because we have an office where this is going to be sitting and I'm going to be doing all kind of the filming and everything at the same time and you just pick it up on the camera. Luckily, I mean, I wear a lavalier mic, whereas I know a lot of YouTubers, they use a shotgun mic on a boom arm, um, which would pick up a lot more. Um, especially um, because they, they use either that or the people who do use lav mics end up going for um, an omnidirectional, which is going to pick up you know the fan noise and things. I'm lucky I've got a cardioid mic on, so it kind of blocks out any background noise, um, which is going to help. But I still wanted to make it silent just in case it did pick up some of that noise. So there you go. Um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea as to what's going on. We're going to have a lot more video content very, very soon. And um, yeah, I guess the next thing I need to do is well, somehow try and position the camera in such a way that I can kind of rip uh, this box open, get the chassis out, and then, um, yeah, have the camera kind of zoomed straight in while I build it, doing some kind of time-lapse video, which you have to bear with me because very, very new to me, but that will be coming in, a, uh, in an upcoming video, hopefully very soon, depending on how long it takes me to shoot, edit, including building it all and everything as well. So yeah, lots and lots going on. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's been probably a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, we are trying to have our videos as short and precise and to the point as possible. 
but obviously a video like this, there was a lot to go through, so it did involve taking a little bit extra time. Um, if you did like this video, remember to give us a uh, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know, give us a thumbs down, but please comment below as to why you gave it a thumbs down and uh, give us some you know, constructive criticism. We're always keen to hear feedback. And that's why I, I think you can see that we've improved a lot of things in terms of audio quality, video quality, and now it's just you know, getting the ideas out there for the, for the right videos. But yeah, um, remember if you did like this, you know, give us a subscribe as well. Um, we're always keen to, to get subscribers and sort of give you guys um, a lot more content. Remember, it's all about you, not us. Um, we wouldn't be where we are without you guys watching these videos, subscribing to these videos and letting us know how we're doing. So yeah, um, thank you very much. And until next time, um, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics and um, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.